In order to understand how the distances to nearby stars are measured, we need to understand how angles are measured after a position change and what the parallax effect is. Here's a simple version of a theodolite, an instrument used for measuring angles both horizontally and vertically. For example, if we set it up with respect to this car, after the car moves and then stops, we can determine this angle. Suppose we're travelling on a train and look out of the window. We can see nearby objects like trees, buildings, electricity poles and traffic signs go by fast, whereas things that are further away, such as mountains, clouds, the sun or the moon, appear to drift by slowly. This is due to the parallax effect and it applies to stars as well. Because of the parallax effect, if we observe a nearby star throughout the year, we'll notice that the star's position changes with respect to the faraway background stars due to Earth's motion around its orbit. Although the background stars also shift slightly in position for the same reason, they're too far away for us to detect their motions easily and they appear to be fixed. In order to measure a star's distance, we use simple geometry. We know the length of the baseline, and we just need to find the so-called parallax angle. If we observe a star twice in a year at six-month intervals, we can measure the star's change in position and determine the parallax angle by using an instrument like a theodolite. After finding the parallax angle, we just need to write down the tangent formula for this angle. So, the distance of a nearby star can be found using the formula d equals one astronomical unit over the tangent of the parallax angle. Applying the parallax method to nearby stars, the parallax angle will always be very small. For example, the nearest star to the Sun, Proxima Centauri, has a parallax angle of just 0.00021 of a degree. Since it's the nearest star to the Sun, it has the largest parallax angle. Stars that are further away have even smaller parallax angles. If we consider the parallax angle in radians, we don't need to calculate the tangent of the parallax angle, since the tangent of a very small angle in radians is almost equal to the angle. So the formula becomes simpler. d equals 1 AU over the parallax angle in radians. But astronomers generally use arc seconds instead of degrees or radians. One arc second is one three thousand six hundredth of a degree, and one over two hundred and six thousand two hundred and sixty five of a radian. If we rearrange the formula using one arc second as the parallax angle, the formula becomes d equals two hundred and six thousand two hundred and sixty five AU over one arc second. Astronomers define a new distance unit, the parsec which is equal to 206,265 astronomical units, and is the distance to a star which has a parallax angle of one arc second. Now the formula becomes, distance in parsecs equals one over the parallax angle in arc seconds. For example, the parallax angle of Proxima Centauri is 0.768 arc second. So the distance of Proxima is 1 over 0.768, which is equal to 1.302 parsecs. Since 1 parsec equals 3.26 light years, the distance of Proxima Centauri can also be given as 4.25 light years. 
distances to stars that are more than about 100 parsecs away can't be obtained using the parallax effect. This is because the shift in position of the star, in other words the parallax angle, is too small to measure.